All right, you can make bass recording complicated if you want. You can record a bass cap, you can combine that with DI signals, maybe some other signals from pedals, and that can be great. I've done that many times with good results on a few records, but it can also get a little messy and a little stressful as you're trying to make sure all the phases align for all these different tracks. So honestly, a lot of the time, I'm 100% happy to just keep it super simple with bass, and I'm gonna show you in this video how to get a solid bass tone dialed in for rock and metal heavy music in just a few minutes so step one is to have a decent bass guitar set up well and with fresh strings and it doesn't have to be a fancy expensive bass i'm using a squire jazz bass here so this is a low-end bass i bought it off a friend years ago to have as a backup at my studio just in those cases where the band came in and you know the bass just was maybe <laughs> just a garbage bass not set up well wrong strings stuff like that, couldn't get a, a, a good tone, whatever it was, uh, we had this as a backup, and this bass actually made its way onto uh, you know, dozens and dozens of local bands recordings and actually a few notable records, I think. So again, doesn't have to be a super high-end bass, but you gotta have a solid, decent bass uh, that's well set up with fresh strings. All right, step two of two is Sansam. So this is the Bass Driver DI pedal. This is what I've used in my studio for many, many years. Now you can swap this out for some of the Sansamp rack units that are out there. And I'm going to give you the plugin alternative as well later in this video. Um, but this plugin has served me really well. And the Sansamp is just, it really is just the rock and heavy music bass tone. Uh, it just gives you such a solid foundation. Uh, and you can use that to build upon in pretty much any rock metal heavy mix. So without further ado, let's check it out. So here is my DI sound. Sans amp pedal on. Hear how it just instantly shapes the tone, you know, the way that we're used to hearing for this type of music. Here we go again. You know, you can, uh, that's fairly clean for a Sans amp. You can obviously get a lot dirtier. You know, I like to keep it more on the clean side when I'm recording. So that's the Sans Amp Bass Driver DI pedal. I'll throw the settings up on screen for you here. Now let's just check out how it sounds in the mix. So not bad, right? Fits the mix pretty well. Let's even hear it with the entire band context here. So that's working out pretty well in the mix just right off the bat. It just instantly gives you that bass sound, which is why I love the Sans Amp units. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to go the hardware route, if you're a Pro Tools user, you've got an awesome plugin included for free. It is the Sans Amp PSA1 plugin. Now, I've got it set to default to just load up the SVT setting here, but this will be in your settings under Sans Amp Factory SVT. There it is. So let's check out how this sounds. Pretty close, right? Sounds great. Now again, let's bypass that and turn the pedal back on. So that was the pedal. Here's the plugin. We've got a bit more gain on the pedal right now, but you get the point. A lot of times I think that uh, bass players and people when you think when you say sans amp they're thinking like really dirty but you can hear how i've actually got this pretty clean on on both of these so often just with a di for my quote clean bass track i'll still use the sans amp plugin or the pedal here sometimes sometimes if i get a track to mix and it's just a bass di track i'll sometimes run that out through my bass driver pedal uh, but i'm just as happy to use the plugin here as well so let's check out the plugin in context <laughs> Go back to the pedal here. Back to the 
plugin. So there you go. Either way, if you're going to go with the Sansant plugin here in Pro Tools, or if you're going to go with the uh, hardware unit, the Bass Driver DI, or some other Sansant unit, it's honestly it is just the heavy bass sound, at least as a foundational starting point, as a really good solid piece to have in your studio that you will end up using time and time again. Honestly, I've done records where we record the bass amp, we do the whole thing, and I get to the mix stage and it's just not working, and I just go back to the uh, DI track hook up this pedal or throw on the plug-in and it's instantly better. It's instantly at the sound that I want. Bonus points here. Sometimes I use the Sansamp plug-in twice or in combination with the pedal and I do one as more of a cleaner bass DI sound like we've been using here. And then on the second track, I'll have a much dirtier Sansamp sound. So let me just demo that quickly for you. So let's take our bass track here. Let's duplicate it. So on this one, we're going to have the same starting settings and we're just going to dirty it up a lot, take out some low end and some high end. So let's check that out. We can go dirtier there. Okay, so we'll have a nice gritty sound here. Now let's go back to our cleaner bass track and we'll blend these in. So let me bring this down. And we'll bring up the dirty track. works great together so sometimes I'll do that with just two tracks with the, literally the same plugin just with different settings in parallel or I'll record you know the bass driver pedal as kind of my cleaner bass sound and then I'll duplicate that throw on the Sansant plugin with a lot more aggressive settings and blend those two together so that's just for bonus points here let's check that out So there you go. That is my simple strategy for getting a really rock solid bass tone for hardcore rock and metal in just a few minutes. It literally takes less than five minutes to dial this in, whether it's on the pedal, the rack unit or the plugin, it just works. So if you're struggling with bass sounds at all in your studio and definitely pick up a Sansamp option, I've used it for over 10 years on literally dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of recordings. If you want more recording or mixing advice for heavy music, definitely check out the other videos on this channel and subscribe. Uh, but number two, head over to hardcoremusicstudio.com and join my email list. That's really the best place to get all of my best free content and free recording and mixing advice. It's also the only place to get access to my premium course material. I've got a free guide for you there that you can download when you join my email list. And that's going to give you five tips that are really going to make a difference instantly in the quality of your heavy music production. So again, that's at hardcoremusicstudio.com. Download the guide, join the mailing list, and that's it for today. We'll talk again soon.